I've uh, been listening to the audiobooks of Jurassic Park and Lost World. Went to the library. I'm pretty stoked to see how much the movie does not live up to the audiobook. All right, before we get into today's video, vlog, whatever you want to call it, the weather is, it, it's not amazing, but it's decent enough to get out on a ride. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I know it's probably just because it's on my mind right now, but Jurassic Park, the, the book or the book on tape, it totally reads like a Stephen King. It's horrifying. Huh, let's get ready to go. Come back, come back, I wonder how you see me. Is everything just what it seems? So out here in Grand Junction, the trails are rideable when it's frozen. And it's 28 degrees right now. I would consider that frozen. We'll see how the lunch loops are. I'm not quite sure. But yes, I am in super stealth mode today with this bright fluorescent stuff going on because this is the winter gear I had when I was road biking. The snow has been on the ground for a little bit though, so there's probably gonna be some slippery spots. It is freezing though to start off with as far as my clothes go. I'm gonna stop. I'm only wearing a, a base layer under this and then this jacket, some winter gloves. They say to dress for 20 minutes from now, or at least that's what Paul told me, so taking the advice. I'm freezing now, but hopefully as I get moving, I'll warm up. Ah, oh, yes. Woo! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. I got cocky. I was like celebrating right here. One rock away. All right, just finished up the ride, got showered and all dry and good. Let's uh, get into the video. So I don't have a microphone stand, so I'm using my bike stand to hold my microphone. Voila. Okay. This YouTube channel is mainly just for fun for me, but if you have not seen my video on how YouTube and I are friends with benefits, I'll link that right here. I get a little bit of ad revenue to put back into the channel, whether it be stickers or cameras or fun gear that we might talk about today. It really is a nice little boost to help keep this channel going. So watch those ads, click on the clicks, do all, I'm just kidding, you can skip the ads. I, I skip all the ads anyway. So today, let's talk about something I bought and why. This is the Gyro Tyrant. The Gyro Tyrant. Giro Tyrant, whatever you want to call it. It is a full face helmet for more protection. <laughs> Uh, it is a light trail helmet to keep your ears cool all day. <laughs> so you're telling me that this is just a cool trendy helmet to look like a D-bag all day? Well, not quite. I hate when people do like reviews or overviews without the helmet on their head. I wanna, wanna see what it looks like on the head, so I'm gonna wear it on my head. So there are two of these not quite full face cover the ears style helmets on the market today. Well, I guess the two most popular would be the Fox Drop Frame and this Gyro T Rant. No, this is not a review, more like a first impressions overview or a it's time for my opinion is right and all of you YouTube commenters out there are internet trolls. I don't I'm just kidding. Everything is so subjective nowadays. It all comes down to your opinion, my opinion today. That's what we're doing. So I hope that maybe going over this today might help 
you know, one of you out there, maybe the one other person that watches my videos, except for my wife. Thanks, wife. Okay, so let's start off with a stats battle between the two helmets. The Giro Tyrant costs $130 to $170 online. And what do you know? The Fox Drop Frame is the, the same. You can find it for the same price online. But on the Fox website and the Giro website, the Fox have theirs on sale for $135, and the Giro is still at $169, Lamau. So the Fox wins on price here. The Giro Tyrant is 622 grams in medium weight, and the Fox Pro Frame in medium is acclaimed 478 grams. The Fox wins again. The Giro Tyrant has an adjustable rock lock, whatever they call it, retention system wheel dial thingy in the back. And the Fox Pro Frame is kind of just a, you put it on your head, tighten the strap down and make sure the right set of pads are in there and that's how it fits. So I'm gonna have to give the Giro the win on this. The Giro has a regular buckle clip and the Fox has a nifty gifty fidlock thingamajig magnet clip. So Fox wins for coolness here. The Giro has a MIPS to help disperse directional force energy when you're in a crash, supposedly to help you not break your neck. I don't know, this one is a little bit different than the yellow thing that we're used to seeing in helmets. This is more like two foam layer pads, ball and socket style. I guess this helps, I, I don't know. The Fox Pro Frame is just, uh, again, it's a put it on your head. It doesn't, it doesn't have the MIPS, at least from what I can see looking at everything online. So I guess maybe the Jira wins here? Mips. The Giro has 14 medium sized vents with some channeled vents at the brow line to help prevent fogging in the eye area. And the Fox has eight big bore intake vents with seven exhaust vents. That's what they're calling them. Equaling 15 vents. I had to do the math on that. So on raw numbers, the Fox Pro Frame wins again, helping your head pass an emissions test. The Fox definitely looks like it's way more ventilated and cooler and I don't know. So it wins here. The Tyrant has an adjustable visor. The Fox is fixed. They have decided exactly where it needs to be to channel the air into the helmet. So I don't know, for adjustability, maybe maybe let's give the Giro. Let's, let's give it to the Giro. So overall, it looks like the Fox is the clear winner. So why did I choose the Giro Tyrant? It basically came down to me just putting the two helmets on my head and seeing which one was more comfortable, which one I liked the best. The Fox Pro Frame, when I put it on my head, it I got these really weird hot spots, or not hot spots, it was just poking the horns on my head. I don't it just it just doesn't jive with my head shape. And out of all the helmets that I have worn and crashed, the Giro seems to fit me the best. No, I'm not sponsored by Giro. I've bought two of other of their helmets, but uh, I think the, the Bell helmet that I had also gave me those same weird things. I guess there's maybe a few different head shapes out there or my head is just shaped weird, but the Giro is the most comfortable for me. Man, that was a lot of words to say all of that. And with as many helmets as I've broken and gone through and worn, I'm willing to invest into a good helmet and to me, the best helmet, the best gear out there in general is the gear that disappears, the gear that you don't have to think about, and that's how these helmets are for me. If I'm thinking about two hot spots on my head all freaking day on the ride, it's just, if I'm thinking about my helmet, not the ride. I wanna think about the ride. All right, now it comes down to, why did I buy a helmet with extra ear coverage and just not a full face? I bought a weird helmet. Did I buy it for style or ear protection? Well, it'll make a great winter helmet, you know, possibly keeping the ears warmer, I think. I don't know, let's go check in on Shane on the trail. Thanks, Garage Shane. As for out here and the warmth, um, I was freezing a little bit at first, now I've started to warm up as I'm breathing hard, but I will say, I think the wind reduction is mainly what's keeping my ears warm. Yeah, my ears aren't super covered, it still ventilates well, but just covering them from the wind, I think, is what really helps as far as warmth is. Back to you, Garage Shane. Ah, thanks for that, Shane, on the trail. It makes sense, but I also have heard that this helmet is not as hot in general during the summer as, like, the Giro Switchblade, which has the optional full face mask. I hear that one's super hot. This one still ventilates. Probably not as great as the Fox Pro Frame, but it's what it is. Now back to why did I buy this helmet? 
I needed a new helmet, but also it kind of has a different reason. From my road biking days, I saw these things called cat ears, which I guess are called Airstreams now. You basically put them on your strap to prevent wind noise going into your ear. Kind of similar to how GoPro videos sounded when they didn't have the, the little wind muffs on them. Versus when you put the dead cats on and oh, suddenly you can hear a lot better. So I was thinking with these straps in here, the way that they came, they kind of had more padding back here than up here, but I just pulled them out and flipped them to put more of the padding towards the front. And I guess not only it helps with the cold, you know, the wind air, thank you Shane on the trail. Thanks Garage Shane. But it also helps with that wind noise. Maybe not as great as the cat ears or air streams. Maybe I should put big old fluffy things here. But <laughs> I, I feel like it helps and with those quiet hubs, it's nice to be able to hear every single little bit on the trail, the tire on the trail. Oh, I just, I love it. I know some people like loud hubs, some people like the wind noise, but I like minimal wind noise and super quiet hubs. So yes, the cat ears, the air streams look ridiculous. Maybe the furries on here look ridiculous. Maybe these side ear pieces look ridiculous, but I like it. It has a purpose, it works, it's for me. Maybe it's not for you, but hey, I think it looks cool. And it, look, it looks like it will work well with goggles. Noise! Well, we'll see how this helmet lasts long term. Hopefully it lasts long term. I have been breaking helmets less and less nowadays, but let me know in the comments what you think. How dumb do I look? Is the fox better? Oh, you definitely should have went with the fox. How I probably should have just bought a full face anyway. Sup, Brosif. And also let me know all angrily how I'm a spoiled YouTuber that gets to buy a bunch of stuff from $100 a month. So thank you for watching. Your view and your thumbs up equals about 0.2 or 0.3 cents, but it adds up to let me buy some cool gear, invest into the channel, and you know, buy stupid expensive things to see if they're worth it, which you'll get a, a taste of that next week again. And I will see you next week in another Garage Vlog. Oh wait, I totally have to plug my Crashing Dad Ride More Crash Less t-shirts. I also have the regular Crashing Dad logo t-shirts. I will put the link below. If you, if you like t-shirts, if you're a Crashing Dad, or if you just like the Ride More Crash Less logo, hit it up. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Garage vlog. Over. Oh yeah, these sweet Folkleys that I got from China for... I think I got them for a dollar. <laughs>